Good morning guys, welcome along. It's uh, Saturday, November the 3rd and it's just gone 10 a.m. Um, before we start, please remember to subscribe and if you like what you see and hit that notifications bell and you'll get the um, alarms come up whenever I do a, uh, a new video, which is very, very often. I try and get one up every day if I can. Um, what have we got here today? Yes, another kit night. Oh my God. The World War One bug has got me, um, and as some of you will know, I've got the um, Wingnut Wings bug as well. Right here, right now, I feel like building something. Just build a kit and then paint it. Now, something like this, you can. Uh, some armour models, you can just build the complete thing and then paint them, and this is one of them. It has no interior. You could just build the whole thing. So, I thought I'd just get this out and do a review and then see how we feel afterwards. So this is the Mark A Whippet. Uh, if you want to see one of these in real life, there's a beautiful example down in Bovington. Um, there's also some others around the world. There's one in Canada, I think. Um, so this is Meng. It's the Tyrannosaurus series, TS-021. Um, it has movable machine guns, realistic drive sprockets and drive chains, cement feed track links included. Yay! I like them. And three paint schemes provided. I'll start off by saying three paint schemes provided it's a bit strange because when you see the deco sheet there's all sorts on there so um yeah keep watching when we get to there it's, it's a bit strange um so right what have we got we've got a kit with 10 sprues of plastic one um one bit of rope a set of decals and instructions the whippet tank originally developed by a guy called willem tritton i'm sorry if i've uh, tortured his name there it's either Triton or Triton but it's got a double T so I'm assuming it's Triton so William Triton 1916 developed this and it was first known as the Triton Chaser <laughs> so uh, yeah that would have been that would have been very um, good going into war I guess but uh, it was soon renamed the Whippet um, after the fast running dog obviously um, it was the first prototype of this tank had a rotating turret taken from the Austin armoured car but then, of course, this um, the actual tank itself, as this model depicts, didn't have that. It first saw action in March 1918. There were 200 built. And, um, yeah, some interesting facts I've got from Wikipedia. Uh, one company of seven whippets took out an entire German battalion um, with no losses themselves and took out over 400 men. Um, in return, uh, one A7 tank, a German tank, took out a whippet in the world's second only tank battle um, and it's the only time a whippet ever fought um, directly with an enemy tank the germans captured a number of these um, only two of which were running and they put one into service um, more about that when we get to the decals uh, decals sorry after the war some were sent to ireland to fight in the anglo-irish war and 17 were sent to support the expeditionary forces against Soviet Russia. Uh, the Red Army captured 12 of them. Again, more about that when we get to the decals. And, uh, and they used them until the 1930s. And a few of them were also sent to Japan. Now that's all come from Wikipedia. So go and have a look yourself. There's a lot of interesting facts about this tank on there. Um, one of which, uh, Musical Box, worth a read. Uh, it got so far forward, it got stuck behind enemy lines. And it took out a lot of stuff um, so go and have a look on wikipedia and it'll give you some more information so more about this kit right um in the box we've got 10 plastic sprues one uh, actual main body component some wire rope decals and instructions as i said earlier so let's have a look uh, I've, I've debagged everything so we don't have that interval in between where i go away and come back so um yeah let's just get this box out of the way and then we'll have a look at these sprues. So this is sprue A. You can see this is the um, hull parts. So we've got the base here and the sides and ends and everything. So you're obviously going to build up the hull. Which is, I always enjoy this because it, A, it gives you more of a model to build. And B, um, you always get, because everything's modelled as a flat panel, you always get brilliant surface detail. So let's have a look at this surface detail. And uh, as we can see it's really, really nice. I think what I'll do is the same as I did on my J1 review and I lift the whole board up. It makes it focus a lot easier. So yeah, we can see there some beautiful surface detail on there with bolts and rivets and panels and everything. 
accuracy I don't know um, they Meng actually sent their engineers to Bovington to photograph and measure the um, the actual tank at Bovington so uh, I would imagine it would be pretty accurate inaccuracy generally comes when these manufacturers get hold of drawings that are wrong so or just use photographs and decide that's the way it's got to look and, and get it wrong um, here we have the side panels for the uh, for the for the main tracks very much like a Matilda this one with the um, sloped armor coming down the side and allows all the mud to run out through the holes in the side which we'll see in a minute um, again beautiful detail um, I forgot to mention actually this was actually designed by the guy William Tritton designed the Mark IV as well so you'll see a lot of similarities like for instance these bearing braces here they're very similar to the Mark IV again we've got beautiful detail here and then when we flip it over nothing much to talk about on the inside but uh, but all nice and clean and then these will be the internal parts of the sides so this will be the hologon here and uh, you can see again lovely detail even though it's going to be hidden by the hull really really nice and these are the sides here where the uh, they'll go into the sides I guess like this and then the tracks will run around them and the mud would run down here two of these sprues um, these are our wheels yum <laughs> millions of wheels um, and yeah sprue cleanup won't be too bad uh, yeah, sometimes it's nice to see they haven't done it, but sometimes they get the sprue attachment points actually going over onto the edge of the wheel, so you've got to clean it in two panes. But these, yeah, these are all actually on the wheel itself. And if you look at these here, quite often what manufacturers do, they manage to get the sprue to run o over the flange. So you've actually got to not only clean from this diameter, you've actually got to cut in and clean around the step as well. But then really for any of what this is going to be seen, it's not really too much to fuss about anyway. Uh, yeah, lovely sprocket detail on there and we've got some mold release here we can see on there so these parts are going to have to have a wash um, which you should always do anyway but yeah in fact it does feel quite oily so yeah nice chain detail there as well and we've got the two identical sprues again for the guns um, these are obviously whoops, sorry off the camera again these are the obviously the ammo belts and then the gun mountings here again all very similar to the Mark IV and the machine gun detail looks very nice not sure what they are I guess they're Lewis guns are they yeah look quite nice again I don't know about accuracy I don't know the subject that well and then we've got this hull piece here and you can get an idea of the size of this thing um, this is 13 centimeters long and yeah that's 13 centimeters long five inches and um, five centimeters wide which is two inches so yes looks like a you could put a seat in there couldn't you and it'd be like a little car <laughs> so yeah but lovely surface detail very sharp very crisp no flash no real bad ejection pin marks anywhere um, is that a crack there no it's just a scratch but yeah, should build into a lovely little model. And then we've got this string. Well, what, it's actually wire. But, uh, I'm not sure how good it will be. Usually this stuff they supply in the kits is so springy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really springy. It's going to be really difficult to use. But um, yeah, we'll give it a go anyway. And then we've got the tracks. You know how I love tracks. So we've got three of those sprues. Let's get rid of those two. So we've got four, what's that? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So we've got 48 links per sprue. Um, three sprues, so that's what's that? 150, 144, 144 tracks, track pieces. 
um, slightly less than the Mark IV with um, 184 track links and what's very interesting is when you look at these I've got a Mark IV track link here you can see let's get this orientated the same they've used the same tracks so you think, great, I've got a tack of Mark IV. What I'll do is I'll go and get some Meng track sprues. Well, you could buy this kit. I got this one from Antics. It's only £25. It's, uh, it's an absolute bloody bargain. Um, so you think, yeah, I'll go and get some, uh, I'll go and get one of these Meng whippets. Or I'll get on with Meng and I'll get some uh, track links off them. And I'll use them on the Mark IV. Uh, because, you know, look, they look identical. They're going to work really well. But no. If you actually look at the spacing here, excuse my disgusting fingernails guys, I'm sorry, I really should stop biting them if I can. But yeah, look here, the spacing's different. So they won't fit the uh, Tacom kit anyway. So yeah, proper shame. Um, not sure if the, if the Tacom tracks, these are the Tacom tracks, five pieces per link, 184 links, yeah. Nice. Um, not sure if the Tacom tracks will fit this, or, or I don't. But I know these won't fit the the Mark IV because the um, the spacing is different. They won't go over the whole parts. So, uh, but there they are. They're clipped together, single piece tracks. Not sure what they're going to be like. Um, let's have a quick look. This is what Phil Froy does, doesn't it? Just builds a couple. Let's see what they're like. Off my lovely Tamiya nippers. If you don't have a set of these, these Tamiya nippers, get some. They're awesome. You, know, you can always get your God hands if you if you but if you've already got a mortgage, you can't afford them. Um, I need to give that a bit of a clean up there. Let's just get that nib off of there. Let's see how they go together. There we go. So they clip together. They're workable. So they clip together there like that. Um, they pull together. They, they pull apart fairly easy. So we're probably going to end up having to glue these. But they feel like a funny plastic. They feel like a like a nylon almost. I'm not sure if it's a... No, it says PS. So it's polystyrene. And they're quite quite flexible. Anyway, that's about the tracks. Um, let's have a look at the decals. Here we've got the decal sheet. Nice and sharp in register and everything. Um, made in China, so they're not going to be cartographed. Let's turn this bloody LCD light off. Look at that flickering. Um, LED light, sorry. You know, if, you, if you put an LED light straight away, you get that. Ugh. So, remember that, guys. So yeah, we've got all the options here for the British tanks, um, and you'll see in the instructions that they're all the same. But then we've got this Russian bit here, and we've also got some German crosses here, but they're not mentioned in the instructions. So very, very weird. As I say, if you look on Wikipedia, the Russians and the Germans captured these tanks, so they obviously used them in their own livery, um, and they give you the decals for it, but they don't actually tell you any colour guides or anything. So be interesting to look that up. Um, I think I'll just do this as a British tank anyway, but uh, there may be a Russian one that would be quite interesting. I just imagine the Russians just stuck their crosses on it. But uh, nice decal sheet anyway. So let's go have a look at the instructions. Let's get the uh, LED back on, unless it causes any problems. So... Nice instruction book. It is a proper book. 17 pages and a nice quality paper. So first of all we'll go over the page and we've got the Japanese version of the uh, telling you all about it. And here again we've got um, some more. I think basically they've taken a lot of this. A lot of this has come from, um, yeah this has all come off of Wikipedia. So it's basically... <laughs> Almost word for word. Um, yeah, it doesn't talk. It's going about Little Willie. I'm not sure if you can get a model of Little Willie, can you? Anyway, 
advertising the tank museum here and its location if you haven't been there go it's worth it um, it really is worth it it's fantastic so uh, yeah scroll this up for you so it looks tidy um, <clears throat> so going through the book I'm going to take a seat now so we've got step one here and we're just basically putting parts onto the hull um, this is strange here you actually this panel here you fold it there are um, recesses in the back and you literally fold the panel to um, to make it fit uh, gun mounts going on here and then adding more armor plate um, then adding more armor plate to the other side adding the roof wedge pieces going in here all separate plates so you're guaranteed to get this lovely detail just hope the fit is good being men it men it probably will be men kits are normally extremely nice I'm a bit of a men fanboy to be honest I do love their models and I love building them um, yes yeah, so they tell you to make holes and they give you the size of the hole which is nice um, optional parts here so that's something you have to research on on your version if it's gonna have them and then we've got some so that's just I thought that was rollers it's just spacers to aid assembly and then we got the, the turret going here the floor going on there um, then we've got the the guns going in on the side on their ball mounts and then we start on the drivetrain with the, um, the idlers and the drive sprockets and then all these little wheels on the bottom it's nothing like as bad as the mark 4 but it all looks the same all these components look the same as the Mark IV. You obviously just got them straight across. Um, this tank was basically developed because the Mark IV was too big and cumbersome for, for some duties. So they wanted something smaller and faster. So that's how this was developed. Adding in these side pieces, here's the upper idlers now. And then uh, putting that all together and putting a roof on. So those wheels there, it looks like they're going to be completely invisible. Um, and then do the same on the other side. Oh no, you can see the wheels through there, but uh, the tracks are going to be over them, so probably best to just build all this together and then blast some paint in there before you put the tracks on. And then um, adding some finishing touches, and we've got some, uh, yeah, 68 links each side. What was it? I said? There was 148, so you've got plenty of spare links. And then we've got these, what's this here, armour... I'm assuming this is armour on the back. Um, it doesn't look like spare track links. It just looks like armour or ballast or something. Track spuds. Oh, I see. These are actually pieces that actually go onto the track links and give improved traction in mud or ice or whatever, I guess. Please tell me in the comments below because I don't know what I'm talking about. Um... And there we've got the sprue call out of the back. And then we move on to our painting options. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, B Company 6th Battalion. May 1918. And this one's in the Army Museum in Belgium. And then we've got option B here. And this one's... This is the uh, Bovington Tank Museum one. All green. And then... We turn the page... Okay, so this is option C, but they're not telling you. Well, there's only two options. I thought there were three. I'm sure it said on the front of the box there were three options. Nope, there's only two by the look of it. So you get two options, both British, both simple. Um, but you get the uh, the German and the um, and the Russian or Soviet in the uh, in the decal sheet. So there we have it. That was the Meng Whippet British Medium Tank. Um, looks like a lovely little kit. I might just get on and, and build it. Give myself a challenge of getting this finished by November the 11th along with the Mark IV. So um, yeah, tell me what you think of the kit guys. Tell me if you've built it. It's been around quite a while. Um, there's probably been quite a few built now. Um, any hints and tips you've got for me? So uh, yeah, 